What's up, Rich Squad? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Dominic Rich. League Cup quarterfinals. Leicester City versus Manchester City. Yeah, I know. Guys, I did not make a video on the, you know, Manchester City's 3 1 victory over Everton over the weekend, you know. And Liverpool defeated Manchester United. I didn't even make a week 17 roundup of the Premier League, you know. It's tired, man. Tired, you know what I'm saying? And this football is hard, hard to keep up with, you know what I'm saying? All sorts of big stuff, big news coming out every single day is hard to keep up with this action, you know. I didn't even realize the Club World Cup was going on until today. I was like, what? The Club World Cup is going on? Like, what the hell is this? You know, but, and, and the other big thing too, Jose Mourinho got fired. He got, he literally got fired from Manchester United, like, Oh, I'm surprised. Like, I was not surprised. I was actually sort of surprised by the, 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 the timing of it, you know. But I was not surprised by the fact that he got fired, if you understand what I'm saying. He should have got fired already. I personally think he should have got fired last season, you know. After finishing second, 19 points behind City. You, you got to get fired for that, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's embarrassing. And this season has been the worst start to any season for Manchester United. And they lost to Liverpool after having lost in, like, nine games. So, you're definitely going to get fired for that. And United are, like, eight or so, 11 points outside the top four. You're going to get fired for that, you know what I'm saying? And all his antics and the row between him and Paul Pogba and maybe some of the other players... You're going to get fired for that. But anyways, I already touched on that. I think he deserves to get sacked. Let's just, you know, wait and see who Man United is going to, you know, bring in as interim manager and who is going to be the, you know, full-time manager whenever they announce it. But I'm not happy he got sacked because, you know, when he's at Man United, I know they're not going to challenge us for the title, you know, so... In that sense, I'm kind of, you know, sad that he's gone. You know, the entertainment was real. Mourinho was entertaining as hell. He was really, really entertaining. The other managers are kind of boring and, you know, they never do anything fun. But we will all miss him, but he had to go. He had to go. But in terms of a City fan, I'm mad that he's leaving. Because now whoever comes in, they're going to look to turn things around at United and who knows, there might be a force to be reckoned with again. But let's talk about the Leicester versus Man City fixture. 1-1 one, one it ended and it went straight to penalties. Leicester's last, I think the last two League Cup games were penalty shootout and they won. So, you know, you got to think that you know, that penalty shootout winning thing got to come to an end. And it did today. De Bruyne scored the first goal for City in the 14th minute. That was an awesome goal, man. That move he made when he tapped the ball onto his other foot and just, you know, bedazzled Hamza Chaud Chowdhury, who is, I actually did some research on him the other day. He is a Calypso boy. His father is Grenadian and his mom is from Bangladesh. What a weird combination, right? You know, so he is a Calypso boy. So I will be unveiling him in my FIFA um, Ultimate Team Series pretty soon. He's already in the Silver Squad and, you know, I will be unveiling him pretty soon. But you guys will probably be like, what are you talking about? Those of you guys who don't know about Calypso boys. But De Bruyne, you know, back on the score sheet after, you know, his long injury layoffs. Two injury layoffs this season, you know. And it's nice to have him back and he is scoring goals. But you must commend Leicester City for, you know, clawing themselves back into this game. Claude Puel deserves a lot of praise for his second half substitutions. You know, bringing on Al Brighton and bringing on Madison and also Ricardo Pereira. It, it made a whole big difference because Ian Nacho has not been, you know, the player he was while he was playing for Man City. And, you know, he, he he has just been awful. Let's just say that. Demari Gray, you know, he dazzled. He looked really good. Hamza Chowdhury had a really good game. And, 
you know, the goalkeeper for Leicester also did well. So Leicester, after those substitutions, they brought themselves back into the game. And Didi with a beautiful, you know, cross field pass to Al Brighton. He, he controlled really, really well. And Zinchenko was not marking his man. And Murich, he was beaten. 1-1. Leicester held on for the draw. It went to penalties. I hate penalty shootouts. Personally, when I'm playing FIFA, I hate penalty shootouts. In real life, watching, you know, the matches, I hate penalty shootouts. But I kind of had a feeling we would have won this. If they were going to win us, they had to do it in normal time. They had to, you know, score a second goal and defeat us. They weren't going to do it in penalty shootout. And... The their their, t their penalty takers were like it was it was weird you know what I mean it was really really weird. Um, we had Harry Maguire stepping up first. I was like, okay, he scored his, he scored his, and then for City, can't remember who took their penalty first, but they scored it. Uh, I think it was Gundogan, and his penalty got you know he scored his, and then Fuchs Christian Fuchs stepped up and he skied his. It was like, oh my God. I was like, wow. And then Raheem Sterling stepped up and tried a Panenka and, you know, screwed it up. It went over. And it was all smooth sailing for City after that. Gabriel Jesus put away his penalty. Um, who else scored their penalty, man? I can't even remember. But I think Zinchenko scored his penalty. And Leicester had uh, Madison come up to take a penalty. And his penalty was saved by Muric. And then we had Soyanchu coming up to take a penalty. And his was saved by Muric again. And it was a good performance by the young, you know, Muric. I think he's um he's from Kosovo, if I'm not mistaken. So, Kosovo, right? Kosovo. And it was a really, really good performance by this team. A young team, Guardiola, fielded today. We had Eric Garcia in the defense. We had um, Zinchenko, Nicolas Otamendi, Carl Walker, some experience there. Kevin De Bruyne, Phil Foden, you know. We had John Stones playing the, you know, holding midfield position. Sergio Aguero was very, very absent from the game today. It's like he didn't even play. Riyad Mahrez, he, he dazzled today. He was awesome coming up versus his old team. And Brahim Diaz, who they say is out in the January transfer window. He is moving to Real Madrid. I did not make a video on it. I don't think it needs a video. But, you know, Brahim Diaz will be leaving the club, I think. And we had Gabriel Jesus, Ilkay Gundogan, and Raheem Sterling coming off the bench. I'm seeing Fabian Delphos on the bench. Edison, Philip Sandler. It would be nice to actually see him play. I haven't seen him play, you know, yet. I think he played during, you know, um, the preseason games. I'm not sure. And Felix Nemecha, I thought he was out on loan. Maybe they called him back because, you know, the club was kind of going through some injury crisis. But, you know, all in all, we played better up until, you know, 60 minutes. And then Leicester controlled the last half an hour of the game. Claude Puel, masterclass there with his substitutions, changed the game, could have actually came back and won the game. Guardiola, I think, was a bit worried that he, you know, wasn't able gonna de wasn't able, you know, wasn't gonna be able to, you know, successfully defend, you know, the League Cup title. But in the end, we held on, you know, defeating them three to one in the penalty shootout. It was another match today between Middlesex and Burton. Burton, you know, defeated them one goal to nil to move on to the semifinals. It would be nice to draw Burton, though. That would be freaking awesome. That would be like, you know, a gift. Not to underestimate Burton, though, but that would be a gift. Then we have Chelsea and Bournemouth playing each other tomorrow. Chelsea should win that game. They will rotate their squad. Bournemouth might not. And who knows? They can down Chelsea. Arsenal versus Tottenham. Arsenal, I already heard, they're going to, you know, they're going to experiment with their lineup. They're going to play the youngsters. Tottenham might come out, you know, with a, a stronger team and they may prevail. So I'm going to go for a Chelsea win, a Tottenham win tomorrow. Sorry, Arsenal, but 
I think you're going to chop and change too much and Tottenham might actually walk all over you. So in the semi-final, I'm hoping not to pick Chelsea. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I don't mind picking Tottenham. Or I don't mind getting Chelsea. But it would be nice to get Burton though. That would be a nice gift back in the finals, you know. I'm jumping the gun, but I think we should beat um, Burton. Back in the finals to face either Tottenham, you know, or Chelsea, according to my predictions. But Bournemouth and Arsenal also has a chance, so it can go any which way. But guys, um, to talk about the Everton, you know, City match a bit before I go, because I'm not going to make a video on that. I'm not going to make it. It's past, you know, it's old news now. And we defeated Everton three goals to nil, courtesy of a brace by um, Gabriel Jesus. Really good to see him back in goal scoring form. And then Raheem Sterling coming off the bench scored one. But, you know, Calvert Lewin, Dominic Calvert Lewin, scored a goal to, you know, bring the scoreline to 2 1. And, you know, City took the game right back from them. We played, we played better than Everton. You know, I always expected us to beat a team like Everton. Not to underestimate the Toffees, but come on, guys. Come on. On paper, we are way, way, way better than Everton. Even if we are depleted, we are better than Everton. But I like the way their team looks with, you know, all their Barcelona rejects over there. The De La Feo. Oh, no. De La Feo, I think, plays for Watford. Isn't, don't he play for Watford? I think he does play for Watford. Not De La Feu. Um, we have um, Dania and we have Andre Gomez and Yerry Mina and those guys. I think there's another Barcelona reject in their team too, but I, I just can't, it just can't come to mind right now. I like the look of the team, you know, Rich Hollison, Ademola Lookman and these guys, you know, Jordan Pickford. You know, Keane. The team is is a, is a, is a good team. I, I, it's a nice mid-table team. But, you know, it was always going to be an uphill task versus Manchester City. So, with the, with the win, we went back on top of the Premier League table. But, Liverpool defeated, you know, Man United three goals to one. Embarrassed them, you know. It was like the most shots ever at goal against Man United, I think, in any game. It was like 30-something shots at goal. It was just an embarrassing performance. They got outplayed, you know. I think um, Mane scored the first goal, which was brilliant. And then Man United pulled one back. I can't remember who scored that goal, though. But um, let me check real quick who scored that goal. That was Jesse Lingard scoring that goal. And he hadn't scored for a long time. And then um young and clap brought on shakiri and he scored a lucky brace it was lucky there was two deflections you know might have gone in still without the deflections but still it was lucky but all in all you know liverpool deserved the win i told a liverpool fan yesterday that it was a lucky win well it was lucky goals and he was like oh man you can't say that man it, it was, you know, the balls were going to go on target anyway, you know. you know. I'm like, I'm just saying, you deserve the win, but, you know, you got lucky with the two goals. Could have ended in a draw. But with that win, Liverpool go back on top the Premier League table, you know. So it's, it's a race right now. A title race is on between City and Liverpool, one point apart. Liverpool, 45 points. And City 44, Liverpool the only unbeaten team in the league um, so far. Tottenham third, 39 points. Chelsea fourth, 37. We have Arsenal fifth on 34 points. Man United are back to sixth. I was wrong in the beginning when I said they're about eighth. But they're back to sixth, 26 points. Not bad, but 26 points. That's way, way off. That's 11 points. Behind Chelsea in fourth. So the gap is real. It's a real, real gap between the top five and the bottom 15. Then we have Wolves seventh. They climb the back up the table, 25 points. Everton, 8, 24. West Ham United, whoa. Ninth, 24 points. Watford, 10th, 24 points. Then the bottom 10 reads Bournemouth, Leicester, Brighton, Newcastle, Crystal Palace, Cardiff City at 16th, 
Southampton at 17th with their new manager picking up a win versus Arsenal. Three goals to two, giving them their first defeat in about 22 matches. Then Burnley are 18th, Huddersfield 19th, and Fulham rock bottom, you know, 20th in the relegation zone, nine points. So, guys, that's my, you know, thoughts on a lot of things there. You know, the Club World Cup, Jose Mourinho, the Leicester City versus Manchester City League Cup quarterfinals, and a quick roundup of, you know, Week 17 of the Premier League, talking about the Everton and Man City game, Liverpool, Man United match, and, uh, you know, a rundown of the current Premier League standings. Well, guys, I'm your boy Dominic Rich. Just wanted to cover those videos because I hate missing, you know, videos, like actually talking about the games. But I've been really, 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 really busy, you know, tired from work and stuff. And I just wanted to, you know, talk about those things. But, guys, if you're new around here, consider hitting the subscribe button. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Don't forget to give the video a big, big thumbs up. And until next time, peace out, Rich Squad.